Hey Divas, welcome and welcome back. It's your girl Keisha here with another video. And girl, it is long overdue, but the plan is she is here. 2024, we are going to get prepared for you in this new situation right here. So if you like sinking funds, savings, challenges, cash stuffing, budgeting, planning, all the things that have to do with your money, girl, then stay right here. So today, Diva, long awaited ado is my new budget planner for 2024. Now, I really, it took me some time to get this together because my intention really was to have these made and to sell them, but um, it just didn't work out. I just couldn't get, I couldn't get it done in time. I'm just gonna just say it like that. I just couldn't get it done in time. So what I decided to do this year is to offer a downloadable version, a printable version, which is live now in my Etsy shop. So if you like what you see today, you can go print it out on Etsy, print it out yourself, and set up your whole situation. If you are new here, last year I launched the 90 day budget workbook, which is I absolutely love. I use this system for the entire year. And this is exactly what this book is, but I just created a 12 month version and um, with a few changes. I still believe in the 90 day system and you'll see all of the elements of this book just in a 12 month version. So let me do a quick flip through. So let's get into it. So all I did is I printed this out. I printed it out on cardstock. You can print it out on regular paper, however you want. Um, maybe you only want to print out a few pages, whatever you want to do. But it does come with the cover. This is the cover, the budget planner, plain and simple. Okay, next we go to this budgeting workbook belongs to. You put your name here and my logo, uh, Do It All Divas, right here on the bottom. Making money makes sense. Okay, then the back of that is a dot grid. You can do whatever you want. You want to have your vision board or just want to leave it like this whatever you want to do you have a page to do that and then i also included the 2024 calendar now this book is undated but just as a reference guide for you to have you know when you are dating your planner you can come and reference this page the 2024 calendar is right here okay so this is one of the differences that we're going to first one of the first differences we're going to see is that we have these goal sheets okay so we have our annual goals and then we have our annual overview so these boxes are left blank because your budget is your finances is broken up into so many different phases is your goal to pay up debt um a specific a specific savings goal do you have big trips coming do you have major expenses you want to save for a down payment maybe you're doing a large home repair whatever your annual goals are um, you fill it in here. That's why I left these blocks blank. And I'm going to fill mine out today with you as well. Then we have the annual overview. So this has the months already filled in for you. And you can use this for whatever you want. Maybe you want to put a major bill, a major event that's going on that particular month. For me, I'm going to highlight like major events. And I really focus on events where it's going to cost me money. All right. So let's just say April. Is my twin's birthday, my husband's birthday, the kids' spring break. So I know that's three three things I already have to set aside money for that's going to take place in April. February, my HOA dues are going to be due. So for me, I'm going to use this to highlight major top-level expenses in those particular months. But again, you can use this page for whatever you want. Okay, next we have our sinking funds sheet. Again, we're going to go over this. We're going to do this in a separate video when I'm setting up my sinking funds for 2024. But I'm going to zoom in and just show you what this looks like. So we have the event or the need. Let's just use graduation. So graduation. What's the amount? $300. When is it due? May 1st. How many months do we have? So if you're starting in January. So we have January, March, April, May. So we have four months. Do you have any money already saved? Maybe you have $50, okay? So how much do you have left? And then the last section is how much do you how much do you need to save per month? So this gives you a, a full breakdown of your sinking funds and really walks you through so you can find out what your final number needs to be and how you're going to achieve that goal. Okay, next, I love this sheet, budget categories. I offered this before. Um, I think this is a, a great tool for you if you don't have budgeting categories, if you just want to 
have some sort of reference points on what, what budgeting categories are and what you can put in each of them. So income, your paycheck, side hustle, child support, your home, anything as it relates to your home. It's really detailed. And then I left three blank boxes here in case you have something else, a category that is not including here. The categories here are just general categories that most people have, but you may have something unique and specific to you like taking care of your parents or a vacation property, whatever the case is, you have three extra empty boxes here. And you guys know already that I have, I use the highlighter method. So I have a highlighter for each of the categories when I'm doing my budget expense tracking. Okay, next is the bill payment tracker. And this is for the entire year. So you'll just write down all your bills and the due date. So your bills and your due date should not change. But what does change is the amount of the bill. Okay, so you have 12 months, 12 columns worth of space for you to write your bill. So like my mortgage is doing the first, you know, that might be consistent. I might pay the same amount, but my electricity bill, that's going to vary from month to month. So you can just come here and reference that. And the one thing I do like about the, about the printable is that I can just, you know, depending on how you bound it, I can just pull this page out. And when I'm working on my bills, I can just reference when I'm working on my uh, budget, I can just reference this sheet for my bills. So I write down all my bills out there, okay? Next, I just added two savings challenges. I have two little, uh, I have two cash envelopes that I created for this challenge. And you can find that on my Etsy shop as well. I'll insert a picture right here of it because I don't have it right next to me. But um, you can buy that. I think I'm selling for five bucks or something like that if you want to do these challenges. It's an easy challenge. Well, I don't say easy, but if you don't have savings challenges, if you've never done a savings challenge, if you haven't decided on which ones you want to do, I included these two in here for you. And then a crucial one, girl, is a money routine. Everything in your life needs a routine is your money routine. So it goes to annual activities, establish your saving goals, establish your annual debt payoff goals, identify major events, travel, or expenses. So that's what I was talking about on the first two pages of the book. Then quarterly activities, break down annual goals into quarterly goals. So if, you're, if your goal is to save $10,000 in 2024, okay, well, are we going to save $2,500 per quarter? Maybe one quarter you get a bonus. So the other three quarters, you're going to save $1,000. And then that one quarter, you'll save the difference. Like whatever those are. Establish or refresh your sinking funds. So your sinking funds, we start off tough and we start off strong in January. I am a, I can attest to that, that January, I had all these sinking funds and last January I'm referring to. And as the year progressed, I realized, one, I was overstretching myself. And two, I didn't really need to have these as thinking funds. So quarterly, I recommend you just go back, revisit your sinking funds and see if this is something you want to do. This is also good that this is a printable right now because if you do need to switch things up, girl, you can just print out a new page and start again. And create and refresh budgeting categories. So if, if this is the first time you've had budgeting categories, maybe these don't work. Maybe you need to add some or remove some. So just, just kind of go back and take a look at all the things that you, you established at the beginning of the year. Then I gave you all the things you got to do monthly. Gather all your bills. Identify major activities and expenses. These are things that are outside of your normal bills. Are you traveling that month? Like, is your HOA due that month? Do your kids, you have to pay for some sort of enrollment or something that month. So you want to make sure you identify those things for each particular month. You're going to complete a monthly budget. We're going to get to that in a second. And then you're going to close out your monthly budget. We'll talk about that when we get to that page. Then we also have weekly activities. You're going to complete your weekly check-in. You're going to set up your paycheck worksheet. The thing about your monthly budget and your paycheck budget, you want to really do those ahead of time. So when the money hits your account, you already know it already has a plan in place. Because sometimes we fumble the bag if we wait until the last minute to do the budget. So you kind of have an idea on what you are expecting to receive. So if you can do those a few days prior, you'll be good to go once the money hits the account. And then you need to scan receipts to the reward app, girl, okay? I have a couple links down below, but I mean, you should have the Fetch, maybe Ibotta, Rakuten. There's, there are a ton of reward apps out there. I'm not saying you have to do them all. I don't necessarily do them all, but choose one, at least one, stick to it and scan these receipts. It is free money. Money 
you're getting money on money you've already spent, okay? So just make this part of your money routine. Daily activities, check all your bank accounts every day. I check all my accounts every day. I mean, this can help with fraud or charges that shouldn't be there, um, whatever. But I just take a quick glance every day of my accounts, even if I don't have to do anything to them. I want to say, yep, I still got $15 in this account. That sounds just right, right? Update your expense tracker, which I'll show you that in a second. And update actual column on paycheck budget worksheet. We'll go over that here in a second. So this is a solid routine that I think you can follow um, if you've never budgeted or if you just want to know, okay, what you need to do or a guide to help you stay on track. All right, girl. Now we're back to the 90-day overview again. I stayed true to the 90 day budget workbook. I think 90 days, like setting your focus on 90 days is so amazing. There's so many great books, the 12, the 12 week year. Like if you really follow a lot of successful people, they'll tell you if you just think of your year in 90 day increments, 12 week increments, I mean, you can progress so much further. So 90 day interview, 90 day interview, 90 day overview, you just write the months because this is undated so you can start whenever. So my first 90 days would be January through March. So I'll just fill that in there. And then like, what are my goals? And my goals are going to be in direct correlation to what I filled out earlier. Okay. So again, if my savings goal was $10,000, then for the next 90 days, maybe my savings goal is going to be 2,500 or 1,000. Um, you know, vacation, pay off projects, like whatever I want to do here. Again, it's going to be in correlation to what I did for the annual goal. All right, girl, this is one of my new favorite inserts as well is our income and debt checker. Okay. So for the next 90 days, anytime we bring any money, anytime money crosses our hands, we are going to track it here. And I specifically put income source very big and bold. I put creditors very low, very little. But income, I, I want you to see those words as soon as he turned the page. So your regular paycheck, your side hustle, child support, alimony, any and all ways you get money. Poshmark, Facebook Marketplace, whatever you do, girl, we're going to track it. And again, you're going to get this sheet every 90 days. So don't say, oh, it's not enough for the, 12, uh, for the entire year. You're going to get this sheet every um, every 90 days. So the date received amount and then the notes. Okay. So again, if the income source is Poshmark, let's say I got paid on the first $53. Maybe I want to write some notes. I sold two pieces. Okay. Sold three pieces. Or if I put side hustle, maybe you want to put something. Um, I baked a cake. Okay. I catered a wedding, just something. So you could reference like, wait, what did I cake making? What? I made a cake for Maria's 16th birthday. Like, whatever. You know what I mean? Okay. The debt tracker, you're going to write down all your debt, girl. Okay? The outstanding balance, APR. This is your the interest rate that you're paying on the debt that you owe. You're going to write the due date. So, and you're going to write the due date. And then for the next three months, you're going to write how much you pay for that particular debt. And then you're going to, at the end of the three months, you're going to write your remaining balance. Okay. Because if you have a remaining balance, then that is what you're going to start your next 90 days with. And then that would now become your outstanding balance. All right. And then this is exactly what's inside of the 90 day workbook. This is where the 90 day workbook starts. Okay. So it's, um, you're going to write down your sinking funds and savings challenges. And this is how I track from month to month because Again, I, I like to create systems that reduce redundancy. So I'm going to write down all my sinking funds and savings challenges. I'm going to write the starting balance in January. And then for the next three months, I never have to write these categories down again. Okay. All I need to do is just update the totals as I go through the month. I gave you two sheets for that. So that can be your sinking funds. I usually, I do my sinking funds and savings challenges combined on these two sheets here. Okay. I'll just show you what mine look like real quick. So this is what I'm currently working out of. And like I said, this book is pretty much identical. So right here. So for so October, November, December. So I haven't closed out December yet, okay? So I've written down all my categories, sinking funds and savings challenges. And for the past three months or two months, because I didn't do December yet, I just wrote down what I started with, what I added. The red is what I've taken out and so forth and so on. So once I close out December... If I'm using these same sinking funds in January, then that the December ending balance would just be what my 
generate a starting balance would be, okay? So again, it, everything just feeds into each other. A nice flow reduces redundancy, very efficient. Okay, then we go into the monthly, undated, okay? Then we go into the monthly snapshot. This is a sheet that I love, one of my favorite sheets in the 90 day workbook. If you've seen any of my other videos, I'll tell you that all the time. So very high level, um, just my projected income, things I know I'm going to receive, okay? My regular W-2 retirement income, stuff like that. Major events this month, so if I have any person I have to buy a gift for, if I'm doing any work in my house, like anything that's above and beyond my regular bills, then my monthly financial goals. Because remember, we, we've already established our 90-day goals, okay? So we have our yearly goals. Now we have our quarterly goals. Now we're going to break them down into monthly goals, girl. How do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. This is exactly a system that mirrors the whole one bite of a, at a time theory. So now my monthly financial goals give you three and then a monthly recap. Then the monthly budget. So here goes those categories that I talked about that we showed that I showed you earlier. All right, those budgeting categories. Those are the categories right over here. Okay. So now we're gonna actually start budgeting your housing, food, transportation, debt, insurances, savings, children. If you have, you know, personal care, entertainment, subscription, like all of the things that we typically spend money on. And then there's one blank category here. If I mean one blank section here, if for some reason there's a category here that isn't captured. All right, then what you're gonna do, you're gonna add up all your categories. You're gonna get your projected income from over here, add up all your debt, take away your total expenses, total income, and then you'll know what your monthly budget is. I love to have a monthly budget because off the bat, I know my money has a plan. Is it gonna be exactly how you plan? No, but at least mentally and visually, you'll have a plan. So for entertainment, for example, if you're on a budget, you can still have fun. Just budget. So for entertainment, $300. So if my girlfriend say, hey, they want to go out or do something, and I'm like, all right, girl, I got $300 for the month. So I can decide if I can afford to go or not. I don't want to say yes to something. And then, like for New Year's Eve or something, I say, yeah, I got the money, girl. Let's go out. And then January 15th, we have a long weekend, the MLK weekend, and I can't do nothing because I blew my money at the beginning of the month, right? But if I know what I'm starting with, then I can plan accordingly throughout the month. All right, then we go to the paycheck breakdown. So this is every time you get paid. It could be weekly, bi, monthly, however often you get paid, you will fill out one of these. Okay, so you do your income, your bills, long-term saving. I always try to pay myself first. I recommend you pay yourself first, whether that's additional, your 401k, if you have a side savings account, your variable expenses, that's your food, gas, entertainment, beauty, all the things that vary in price. Not a fixed bill, but things you have control on what you spend. Okay, then here goes your sinking funds and savings challenges. And then at the end, if you have any money left over and you want to tackle some of those goals you set in the beginning of the year, right? If you want to put anything else in savings or debt, this would be the area you do it. Then over here, we have the cash breakdown. Okay, if you're a cash budgeter, this system is really made to for cash budgeters, but you can still use this even if you're not. But if you are a cash budgeter, you'll write down the categories, the amount and the denomination. So for groceries, $600. How many, like which denomination? Do I want all hundreds, fifties, twenties, etc. Total count down below, the total and the total value here. So you get five paychecks per month. Okay. And then we go to the expense tracker. This is what I was talking about with the highlighter system. So you have your date, the transaction category was a withdrawal, deposit, and remaining balance. So again, the first um Mortgage payment, the category for me will be my home because I categorize my mortgage for a home expense. Withdrawal will be the amount I pay. And then if I am just have a running total of my account balance, I'll have it here. And then back to the highlighted method, I would use the category. Let me get the right color. Okay, so this is for my home. So then I will highlight that transaction with my home highlighter, okay? So you have five pages of expense trackers. And then this is what I was mentioning in the money routine, the weekly check-in. Again, an important page, reduce redundancy, but gives you a clear picture on if you said what you were gonna do with your money. So here, you'll write all your categories. Again, the categories are given to you in the beginning. 
okay and for the entire month you just come in and fill it in so for groceries how much did i spend week one 50 50 100 200 300 monthly total you know what i do with this monthly total i'm gonna come back to my monthly budget girl were you right were you on track with that did you did you stay within budget every breakdown has an actual column so this is this would be great so groceries i spent 300 dollars and i budgeted 350 okay so now i know next month all right maybe i can still budget 300 maybe i need to budget 400 whatever the case is so this is an excellent sheet as well okay okay so for the next three months it'll be the same okay same situation but where we start where we see a difference is at the end of that third month okay so you'll have your weekly check-in your final weekly check-in after the third month on the back you have a notes page and then you have the 90 day over we're gonna start this thing all over again okay we, we just finished one quarter now we're gonna do april through june or again whatever time you're starting this and you'll get the same setup your income your debt tracker okay your sinking funds set up again because again maybe remember i said every quarter refresh your sinking funds see if these are what you want to do maybe you've completed some sinking funds have an end maybe you completed it and don't need to start it again maybe it was like for a graduation or a wedding so you don't have to necessarily restart that sinking fund again because you've already met that goal okay so this would be a place you come start fresh write them all over again and then we start all over for the next 90 days and so forth and so on so i think i just printed out printed out six months of, of um printables okay well that is the 12 month budget planner again same exact guts as this with just a little bit more detail because it is a 12 month planner all right so i didn't want this video to be too long so i think i might end it here and then i'll just do a separate setup video so let me know what your thoughts are if you love it if this is something you might be interested in and if you already have a system in place again maybe you just get the pdf and you just use some of the some of the components maybe you like the money routine okay maybe you like the 90 day overview or the annual goals and the annual overview maybe there's just some things that you can add to your current system so i look forward to hearing what you have to say and girl i look forward to 2024 i'll set this up in the next video so like always if you haven't done so already go ahead and subscribe to your girl and like always i'll see you in the next one later